Well, now what I'd like to do is talk to you a little bit about the FileMaker product line in advance of Bill starting his actual demo. So on this slide, you see the FileMaker product line. And I'd like to start on the left with FileMaker Pro. So FileMaker Pro is the tool that most of you either own or have downloaded a trial of. It gives you the ability to create new databases from scratch and be a great productivity application and also be a client to FileMaker Server or FileMaker Pro as a host. Well, FileMaker Pro Advanced, the next tool that you see there, is a superset of FileMaker Pro. It includes some great tools relevant to developers or people creating solutions, such as a script debugger, data viewer, the ability to create custom menus, and much more. Well, in the center is FileMaker Server, and FileMaker Server is what I like to consider the hub of any FileMaker deployment. It's where you can host up to 125 FileMaker database files to up to 250 FileMaker Pro clients or FileMaker Go clients, as we'll talk about in a while. It also gives you the ability to do web publishing through our PHP API and also connect to SQL data sources. And FileMaker Server Advanced, finally, is an advanced version or a superset of FileMaker Server. It takes off the 250 user limit, so you can have even more people consume your solution simultaneously and add FileMaker's instant web publishing capabilities as well as being able to be an ODBC data source to other systems. As you see down at the bottom is Bento. If you're a single user and you just need to track your data and keep it in sync with all your Macintosh products, like iCal and Address Book, Bento could be a great tool for you. And finally, what we're going to transition to on the next slide and what we're really here to focus on today is FileMaker Go for the iPad. FileMaker Go gives you the ability to take any database that you create or buy or download on your iOS device. It also enables you to connect to server. And the great thing about this is that most FileMaker databases, they just work. So things that you might have created in the past or that you really had no intention of deploying to FileMaker Go can now be taken on the road on your iPhone, iPad, and iPod Touch or connected to on FileMaker server from these devices. All the layouts, lists, everything that you've built is supported. The scripts that you've written just run the way they would on FileMaker Pro. It's really sort of like FileMaker Pro, but without the creation ability. And the relational models respected, all of the security that you set up continues to work, even access to SQL data sources that you've set up from FileMaker Pro or FileMaker server. The best part is, though, that you get the iOS touch interface and all the goodness of the platform that we've come to love. So there's somewhere around half a billion of these devices out there worldwide now, and FileMaker just runs on it, and it's free, available at the iTunes Store. You can pinch, swipe, double tap all the things you're used to on these devices. And FileMaker, as Bill's going to show you, has given you some great new abilities to deploy solutions that are set up to look exactly as you would expect them to on an iOS device. You can get things, you can get FileMaker files on the device in several different ways. You can load them through iTunes, which is, by the way, where you can go download FileMaker Go right now if you'd like. Or you can download them from web links or even email them to each other, and FileMaker just works. Well, before I transition to Bill, I'd just like to make a couple of points about where FileMaker fits in the iOS development universe, right? So when you go to deploy an app on iOS, I'm sure many of you have thought about this. I've got this great new device. Now, how do I get my data on it? So you can create web apps, of course, and deploy them to, to any kind of device. You could write Xcode or Objective-C apps and run them through the Apple process for putting apps on the App Store. Or finally, and we think, very interestingly, you can deploy them using FileMaker. And I think Bill's going to make a pretty credible argument here over the next 40 minutes or so that this is really the easiest, quickest way to deploy robust, complex applications to your iOS devices quickly and easily. So with that, I'd like to now hand it over to my colleague, Bill Kaiser. Bill's a business development manager at FileMaker, focusing on our Apple relationship. He's been at FileMaker for over eight years and has done numerous in-store demos for Apple retail 
and corporate, and as the business and as business development manager focusing on that segment of our business, Bill Kaiser. Hey, thanks a lot, Bill. Uh, appreciate that, and um, you know, excited to be here today. I think we've got a, a really packed session of uh, of content, and uh, we'll uh, we'll go through it. So let me uh, move over to my desktop here and um, and talk about a couple things. You know, to get us started. Um, you know, the, the folks attending here, many of you are familiar with FileMaker, all the great things it can do for your Mac or PC. Uh, and, and what I'm going to do is ask you to do me a favor for the next half hour or so. Forget everything you know. FileMaker has always been an excellent database for your computer. It's been a great way to create custom solutions for your business. But it's a platform to create custom solutions, but not only for Mac and PC, but for iOS devices, iPad, iPhone, and iPod Touch. And that's what we're here talking about today. So the goals we're going to have are to uh, build something from scratch and deploy it to iOS. Uh, we'll do that in about 15 or 20 minutes. I want to review some of the starter solutions and ways you can get started uh, today, and then finish with question and answer and, uh, and define some resources. So, uh, so let's begin. So the developing from scratch part here, let's, um, let's build this out. So I have a little folder here on my desktop of employee files. And within that folder, there's uh, some employee information, some uh, equipment uh, information as well. I'll open up these spreadsheets just to show their standard Excel spreadsheets. And, uh, and that's all it is. So, so the concept here, we have some employee data, we have some equipment data, some information around that equipment uh, sitting in Excel on my Mac. Uh, I also have a folder. I'm going to shut those down. I have a folder of photos. And these are employee pictures, right? That's all they are. They're JPEGs, pics, GIFs, what have you. Uh, sitting in a folder on my computer. The concept is it's 3 o'clock on Friday, and we want to deploy an iOS solution. We have a need that uh, we, need, we have a need that needs to outline how much equipment is owned by each employee. Right? We, we need an asset management tool, and I want to be able to deploy this to, I, to iOS so IT can walk around with their iPads and uh, identify those individuals that have more than a threshold that we've defined, and that threshold is $5,000 of, of equipment. If they have more than $5,000, that's worth taking a look at and making sure it makes sense for that individual. Right now, that's not easy to find, right? We've got an Excel spreadsheet on one computer. I have a dozen or so folks that uh, need to access this via iPad. So let's build, in the next half an hour, we'll build a little asset management solution, bring this information into FileMaker, deploy it to iPad, uh, and you can see the tools uh, we use to do so. So how do you do this in FileMaker, right? I'm going to do a couple things before I deploy it to iPad. I'm going to build the solution in FileMaker Pro. Uh, I have Pro Advanced actually installed, and, and I'm going to use, um, use that to build it. So I'm going to take this Excel spreadsheet called Employees, and I'm going to drop it on FileMaker Pro Advanced. And the first thing that pops up is this is an Excel spreadsheet. Do you want to use that first row to name the fields like spreadsheets are typically set up? And we'll say OK. And we're going to call this Employees and drop it right on the desktop. And you can see this employees spreadsheet or employees FileMaker solution was just created, dropped on the desktop, and it looks a lot like the spreadsheet we had, right? But now I can do things. I could upload this to FileMaker server and share it with hundreds of people around the world accessing it from PCs, Macs, or iOS devices. I could tie it into our Active Directory or security. We could put field level security. Um, I can uh, do things that are you know, a little bit more difficult on spreadsheets. I could sort, right? I could simply sort. I could um, come over here, for instance, to the group and notice the production. I'll right click there and find matching records and notice there's 50 people in the production group out of the 96 that are in this solution. Okay? So uh, what I've done so far is I've done one thing. I've dragged and dropped an Excel spreadsheet on the FileMaker and I've created this, uh, this little solution. It also when I did that import, created another layout, which is simply just a view into the records one at a time. Okay? So let's do one more thing. I'm going to take this file, and I'm going to share it to the FileMaker network, and I'm going to let all users see the employee solution. Now, again, this is peer-to-peer -peer sharing. The same experience uh, that you're going to see here happens when you use FileMaker Server, and that's the tool to, uh, uh, to share with work groups. So I'm going to go over to my iPad, and we're going to share the iPad or let you see the iPad. Right here's my iPad. And I'm going to open up FileMaker Go. And I'm going to click on this little uh, network, look for a local network. It's going to see my computer. And it's going to look for shared files there. And it's going to open up employees. Right? I can 
pinch and zoom this, right? I can bring that a little bigger. I'll move my iPad over to where we can see it. I'll make this a little smaller. And you can see we're looking at Lori's record, right? So on my iPad, I'm going to tap on Lori's name and change it to uh, Ann. And I'll tap off. Notice what happened on my Mac. It's Ann. It's Ann everywhere, right? Everybody who's using this solution is getting that experience. So again, I've done two things. I dragged and dropped a spreadsheet, and I shared it to the network. And I'm using something custom on iOS right now. So, uh, so let's keep building this out. Again, the scenario was we had employee information, we had equipment, assets, uh, we had some pictures of employees, and right now so far we have some, uh, some employee data sitting on my iPad. I'm actually sitting on the computer used from the iPad. I'll pinch that down again. Notice how um, this is a simple layout that was created upon import. I want to create something that's more optimized for iPad, and, and here's, uh, here's a good way to do it. So I'm going to build out FileMaker here a little bit. I'm going to edit the layout. And I'm going to create a new layout, and we'll call this iPad. We'll move. Uh, we'll create a standard form. We'll move all the fields over, and take a look at our our themes. Right. So we have several different themes available to us. But what's new in FileMaker 12 is we also have these touch optimized themes. Right. You can notice the Onyx touch is has bigger buttons, uh, things that are more optimized for touch. So just for discussion's sake, let's uh, let's make an Onyx touch theme and say finish. The other thing that's new in 12 is we can design for different sized screens, right? Again, around iOS. So for instance, if I was creating for iPhone, it shows a little guide what the iPhone screen size is. I'm actually creating this for iPad, so I'm going to drag this out and drag this down and exit layout. And in the background, you'll see on my iPad, we have a new layout available to us. I'll go over to the iPad layout. And this is uh, the same theme. You know, that's a little dark. So let me change that. I'm going to edit the layout, and I'm going to change the theme from here to something a little, uh, a little cooler. Hmm, River touch It's just a personal preference. I'll say OK. And notice what happens before I exit layout. I'm going to leave this kind of off to the side. Move the inspector out of the way. Exit layout. And notice what happens to my iPad in the background, right? applied everywhere, right? So that's how you um, manage these solutions. So now we have an optimized solution that's been optimized for uh, iOS. We have the equipment uh, information still sitting in a spreadsheet on my computer. We still have the folder of uh, photos. Uh, let's take a couple of minutes and, and build out that solution, that solution we discussed. I also want to import uh, or implement a business rule. Our business rule was uh, nobody should have more than $5,000. And if they do, that's, uh, that's worth taking a look at. So let's continue building that out. So I'm going to import some records here. So I'm going to go to File, Import Records from a file. We're going to navigate to the employee files, that equipment spreadsheet we were looking at. We're going to say Import. We're going to create a new table called Equipment. And this will, uh, I'll show you that in a minute. And we don't want to import the first record because it contains the field names. And you can see this mapping real time, right? So I'm going to import. There were 783 items brought in to the equipment table that was just created. We'll go back to our iPad layout. So let's edit that layout and make it, uh, um, make it usable for our, our concept here. So I'm going to take some fields and just move them out of the way for a second. I see I have some contact information. Let's move that out of the way. And we're going to put an interface on this. Up here we have a tab, inter a tab control tool. Right? This is how you add tabs to a layout, very common. I'm going to drag and drop. And we'll call the first tab. Uh, let's call it, no, let's call it contact information and inventory uh, is the second tab. We'll say OK. And um, we'll exit the layout. And again, in the background, notice what's happening on my iPad. We're starting to have an inter interface here. And I can tap on the different tabs. Uh, we don't have the data there yet. Um, let's, let's build that out. So I'll edit the layout. I'm going to take that contact information we had. Notice what happens as I move it around. We have tools that allow you to design interfaces uh, clean, more cleanly than, than before. I exit the layout. And as I scroll through the records now, I'm seeing the contact information. right? And 
the same experience is happening on my iPad on the bottom. I'm going to scroll through these records and uh, start seeing the information separately. So we still have the inventory. Let's, uh, let's tie these things together. I want to see which inventory is associated to each employee. So I'm going to enter Manage Database. And this is where things are really defined right, in the solution. We have two tables. Uh, we have the fields in each one of the two tables. And here they are graphically represented. So we want to tie these together. We want to build a relationship between these two. How do we do that in FileMaker? I'm going to recognize they both have a common piece of information of employee ID in those two spreadsheets we brought in. So I'm going to say, hey, when employee ID equals employee ID, share the information between those two tables. That's a relational database. So we'll say, okay. Now I can go back over to my inventory tab. And before I built a little tab interface, that's the tool we used. Here I'm going to build a portal. A portal is a view into related data. So I'm going to drag and drop. Where do I want to show the records from? I want to see the equipment. So vertical scroll bar, I'll alternate the background. What do I want to see for each employee? I want to see the item, the model, and the cost. Now as I scroll through this solution, I'm seeing the equipment that's associated to each employee. And as I said earlier, if I tap on the inventory now on my, on my iPad, you're getting the same experience. So all I'm doing here is dragging and dropping, and, and uh, we're deploying to iOS as a, as a simple way to do so. So let's keep going. Uh, we had a couple, let me edit the layout. I'm just going to move this a little, a little down there, drag this down a little bit. Um, so the concept was uh, we still have some rules we want to implement. We can see the inventory. Who has more than $5,000, right? I can eyeball this and kind of get a feel for it. Um, but I want to add a field to the layout that doesn't exist. So I'm going to manage database. And we'll go over to our equipment table. And we'll create a new field, field called total cost. Now here I have a couple options. I could do a calculation, right? Or I could do a quick summary field. Now we can total the number of costs here. Say OK. OK. And I'm going to edit the layout. And I'm going to take that field we just created. And instead of putting it on the inventory tab, I'm just going to throw it right on the front page. Because I want my, uh, my IT guys to be able to walk around and quickly identify those individuals that have more than $5,000 in inventory. So we'll grab the field we just created. I'll drag this out so it aligns with the others. While I'm here, I will actually format this field as currency. I throw a thousand separator on there and exit the layout. Now as I scroll through these records, I can quickly identify those individuals that have more than more than five thousand dollars and the same experience is happening on the iPad. Our business rule was five thousand dollars, right? I've said that a few times. How do we put business rules into FileMaker? I'm going to edit the layout and I'm going to throw a conditional format. I'm going to right click on that field, put a business rule on that says when the value of that field is greater than five thousand, you know, let's make it bold and let's make the text red because we need to call that field out. So again, as I scroll through these records, you'll notice we're only receiving, based on that for conditional formatting, the fields that are greater than 5,000 are called out in red. That's how we put business rules in the FileMaker and uh, very powerful. So you've just seen me click and drag. So the last piece to this custom development is, if you recall, I have these photos of employees. Notice how the way these photos were, um, were handled. We have the employee ID in the, in the name of the picture. So it's employee ID dot something. I want to bring these photos into our solution, and I want to be able to use that employee ID to tie in to those other two tables we were working with. So we're going to go to FileMaker again, and I'm going to import records, this time from a folder. We'll navigate to the Photos folder, and we'll bring them in. We want to create a new table called Photos, and we'll say Import. Now there's 95 pictures that are brought in, uh, thumbnails, uh, all the information is, is generated there, right? So we have the image, we have the file name with the employee ID, where, where it exists, and the uh, thumbnail. So I want to create a new field again that's called Employee ID to be able to tie it into those other tables. 
So we are going to go into Manage Database here, and we're going to create a new field called Employee ID. And this is a calculation. Because I know that Employee ID exists, right? So I'm going to drag this off to the side just so you can see. We have that Employee ID as part of the file name. So what type of calculation am I going to work with? This is our Calc Engine, and for those of you who are not using it, uh, that's definitely a very powerful engine that you, is worth exploring. And you don't have to start very complex. For instance, in this example, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the number, right? So I'm going to use a get as number calculation, which returns to me just the number that's in the file name. So that's my entire calculation, get as number file name, and it's going to return to me a number. And I'll say OK. OK, and notice on the bottom of the form here, it just created an employee ID calculation. So let's hop back over to Manage Database. Now that we have an employee ID inside of our photos table, we can use it. When employee ID equals employee ID, share the information between the tables. We'll go back to our uh, iPad layout. You can see we have it here yet. I'm going to edit the layout, and I'm going to take a field and just throw it right on the front page because I want to quickly identify those individuals. What do I want to see? I want to see the from the photos table, I want to see the image for that person. So I'll make it big and get rid of that label and say exit. So now as I scroll through here on my Mac, I'm seeing this. And as I scroll through here on my iPad, I'm seeing this as well. So we can go through and quickly identify, well, here's Chris, has $9,500 in inventory. Uh, notice he has four computers and a couple monitors, and we can scroll through those and, and, uh, and see what the issues are. So that's custom development, right? We, we are using something custom for iOS, uh, using FileMaker Go. FileMaker Go is a free, like Phil mentioned, it's a free download from the Apple iTunes store, and uh, it's a client. And, um, and that, that is custom development. So let's keep going. Um, where could we take this? Right? We have several examples on our website where you can explore. You know, here's, a, here's an example which I like. Um, I'm going to hop over here and take a look at something. I have a bunch of local files here on my iPad. I'm going to open up one that's called Healthy Foods. And Healthy Foods is an example of um, between 15 and 20 hours worth of work in FileMaker. And the concept here is there's an organization that has field-based employees that need to manage uh, new store openings for healthy foods. And uh, the construction folks are walking around making sure that their spreadsheets are up to date or their paper forms are up to date on, um, on the construction of these new store openings. And the process as it stood before FileMaker was they would go around with their forms, they would mark things down, they would take pictures with a digital camera and, and print those pictures and, and staple them to the forms and mail them back to corporate. But it wasn't effective or it wasn't efficient, I should say. So here's the concept, right? We have a store number, some store information, the inspection date, and I can walk through here. Here it starts out, and we're looking at my iPad, the inspection status, right? There's 96 questions on the form that have been filled out, and we still have some to go, right? So let's open up the inspection list. I'll tap on the first one, and this is the form, right? So I can scroll through here, and I can see, you know what, the dining room, that's approved now. And uh, I can make some notes in here, right? And uh, and that's approved, All right? Make some notes. I'll back out of there, All right? So now we have 98 on our list that are complete. I can look at the dashboard, right? I'll tap on the dashboard. And what the dashboard does is it creates a chart of the status of each one of the categories that are on that form, right? For instance, in the kitchen, we still have a few questions to go, right? The doors, we still only have one to go. We're done with exterior signage and, and HVAC, right? But we still have some things to do. Uh, so it summarizes the total number versus the items completed. I'll back out of there. I can take pictures, right? I'll tap on photographs. Before, they needed a camera to do this. Now, I could click on capture, and it takes a, takes a picture right with the uh, camera on the iOS device, stores it in that solution. And then a franchisee agreement, right? I can walk through this with the franchisee. I can tap, yep, I was present. All these agree to... Uh, uh, to the terms, and then signature capture. This is built into FileMaker. This is this is a container field when you open it up on iPad, right? So you just sign right on the device, stores it locally, right? So I just signed, um, had a signature there. So now I can run this report. Notice down here, I'll run the report. I have an option here that's been scripted in. Do you want to email it? Do you want to view it? We'll just view it, but notice what happens on the bottom of my iPad. It generates a six-page 
PDF on the device. There's my signature I just did. This is a PDF that's sitting on my iPad now with the current status of this project. So this is just a great way uh, with a little bit of investment to implement how you can move from paper forms or spreadsheets uh, to iOS. Okay. So that's custom development, uh, where you can go, how you can get there. So let's, um, let's move along. So again, the goals for today, we wanted to build something custom iOS from scratch. Right? We did that in 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, shared it out to iOS. We had two different spreadsheets we brought in. We had a, a folder of images that we consumed. We wrote a calculation. Uh, we added a couple fields. We put business. Um, we put a business rule in our solution, and again, we deployed it all in iOS in that, that short period of time. Next, starter solutions. You know, if you haven't reviewed our starter solutions in a while, uh, they're, they're, they've come a long way. They're absolutely worth uh, taking a look at, and I think it's important to, to check them out because we see a lot of customers who start with one of the starter solutions and they customize it to their own business flow because they're all open. They're, you, can, you can modify them to, uh, to meet your business, business process. So let's, uh, let's take a look at them. When you open up FileMaker Pro, you're going to get a quick start screen. And it looks something like that. Well, it looks like this. And you have the option to create a new database. You can convert an existing file. You can use a starter solution. Uh, and then there's some resources here, right? You can visit our resource center. You can check out some hands-on tutorials. You can check out the forum. But we have a lot of, uh, lot of resources available for our customers as well. So I'm going to use, click on Use a Starter Solution. These are the starter solutions that ship with FileMaker. And um, you know, assets, contacts, contacts, inventory, product catalogs, uh, invoicing, time billing, resource scheduling, those types of things, very common uses. Right? So uh, let's take a look at a couple of them. I'll choose contacts as the first one, and I'll say choose. And um, I'll throw that right on my desktop. And we'll hit save. Uh, the first thing I want to call out, let me get rid of that guy in the background. And, So the first thing I want to do is call out the fact that um, these are full-functioning solutions. And they also have layouts that are optimized for your iPad and iPhone, and they recognize those devices when they're opened up on those devices. So you get a different layout. For instance, if you notice, this is what happened on my desktop. This is contact details. If I open it up on iPhone, contact details, you're going to get a different view that's been optimized for that screen. Right? You're not going to get quite as much information um, because you have a smaller screen to work with. So we'll look at desktop. You can, uh, you know, you can add some information here, right? You can start using it, and call it. We'll add Phil to this solution, and uh, you know, maybe he lives at one, two, three Main Street. Google Maps is tied in, right? So you can start managing your customers. You can send them an email out of here. You can do these things. Um, you can store it locally on the iPad, or you can use it from a server, or how I was demonstrating it. But you have some some options and contact. Management is a very, very common place to start. Let's uh, let's take a look at another one. We have, uh, we'll do, we'll shut that guy down. We'll open up and use another starter solution. And you can always do a new from starter solution right here. When I'm not in this slightly very so if I cancel out of here, you could always come up here and say new from starter solution, and you'll get the same option. So um, here's another one: assets, right? We'll say assets. We'll throw that on the desktop. And uh, you know you can get some information. Uh, you know you can start managing your assets here. I guess is what I'm saying. Let me sh let me open up another one that has some data filled out, right? So we're looking at asset detail here. Right? You can start seeing it. There's signature capture built in, uh, date checked out, days till due, that type of thing. Depreciation values. You can start managing things. There's different uh, charting that that was created. And again, this is something that was just added on. Uh, to this to this solution, but you can start charting things. Um, you know, you can you can see different things uh, as they relate and how they um, how they're managed. But I guess my point here is, feel free to use these starter solutions and uh, and modify them and and continue to add additional functionality with these with these layouts as an example. Uh, another one that I think is definitely worth mentioning that I use quite often. Uh, that customers are interested in is invoices, right? Okay, I'll save invoices right to the desktop. 
Invoices allows you to manage customer information, uh, product information, create invoices. We, we have s several customers that um, you know, tie this back to their accounting systems. So they run their entire small or mid-sized business um, with FileMaker from, uh, from certain elements. So let's, let's explore this a little bit. So I'll hop over to customers, um, customer detail. I'll add a couple, right? So we'll call it uh, ABC Company. Yeah, we'll add a new record and we'll call it CDE Company just to, to explore. And I'm not going to fill out all this information, but you get the idea. I'm just adding a couple customers. Uh, we'll hop over to uh, products, right? Let's add a couple products. Uh, what do we sell? We sell apples and we sell oranges. And again, I'm not filling out the information, but now we have a couple customers. We have a couple couple products in our solution. So let's um, let's navigate over to invoices, and we'll create a new record for invoice. Well, who are we going to bill? We have two customers in our solution that are pop this is populated from our our customer area, right? We'll we'll say ABC Company purchased something. Well, what did they buy? Well, they had uh, two apples, and um, you know they bought one orange. And maybe I want to print this invoice. Right. This is a PDF that you can generate. You can email it. You can do this all right here. But we have this pre-populated as a great way to start. Notice, I think this is interesting. Notice there's um, some real basic, you know, kind of layout here. We give you the opportunity to customize this. We don't have a logo in here right now, if you'll notice. So uh, let me open up this, uh, this section here. I have a logo available, so I'm going to enter this company info, and I'm going to take that logo that I have, and I'm just going to drag it right on there. And we'll call it the Daring Company and exit. So that's all I've done. So now I can navigate back over to my invoices. We created that one invoice already that bought two apples and an orange. Now look what happens when I print it. It's been customized, right? So we give you ways to customize this for your own business as well. The Daring Company, the logo appears on the invoice, and um, you know all this information obviously is populated based on the information you fill out in the in the solution. So again, one another example um, of, a, of a great starter solution that can get you off the ground um, uh, with FileMaker. So a couple quick resources. Let me just visit this resource center because I think it's worth mentioning. Uh, this is a great way to get started, right? Uh, it, it shows you some videos, some quick learning areas, uh, the training resources available, the community, the downloads. Uh, we've done a great job you know, really trying to listen to the community and deliver the um, deliver the solutions that they're looking for and the ways they can get started. So to wrap up, what we've done is we've created something from scratch. We, um, you know, had the Excel spreadsheet information, the folder of pictures. I've described that, but that was a, a custom solution for iOS. Showed some starter solutions with iOS optimized layouts that are available to you to get started with. You know, what do you do next? Well, my recommendation is if you haven't already, build something. You know, download FileMaker Go from the App Store. Uh, build something in FileMaker Pro, um, and uh, you know, and you can you can customize it. Remember that with FileMaker, you don't have to have all of your business rules predefined. You can start easy and modify it as time goes on, at least to get get in the uh, in the world. So with that, Phil, I'll hand it back to you um, to handle some question and answer and discuss resources. Great, thanks very much, Bill. <clears throat> wow. Well, um, I'm, most, I'm almost as overwhelmed by all the questions as uh, some of you might have been by the presentation. So this is really great. We've got a whole bunch of things that we can go over. Um, and then for those of you that don't get questions answered while we're online here, we will be putting up a slide with some resources and phone numbers and so forth that you see on your screen now. So we'll. Uh, I'd encourage you to go ahead and jot down that information, um, if you would. That inside sales phone number, 800-725-2747, is an important one. It's a way to get to the inside sales team here for licensing questions and sort of light technical questions. They have a system engineer that works with them as well that can field some of the more complex things. And they have a, a direct line out to um, the folks on my team and Bill's team um, in the field, so if there's something that uh, that you'd like one of us to come out and actually talk to you about and demo, if it's appropriate, we can do that. The, while I'm on this page, let me go ahead and point out that you can download FileMaker Go for iPad and iPhone for free. There's a link to our store there, but of course it goes through the iTunes store as well. 
so you can go there and deploy it there. We're going to talk about getting files onto your device in a second. Um, for those of you who are interested in taking your skill set with FileMaker a little farther, there's um, the webinars there, but you'll also find at, I think, support slash training, there's a lot of great training resources available from the tutorials that come with FileMaker Pro and even the, the trial um, onto full-blown certification classes that you can take in a leader-led fashion and several web resources and so forth. So please check all that out and then that link in the middle. Um, every year we have about 1,100 of our closest friends and colleagues get together at our annual developers conference. This year it's in San Diego, California. Um, and we generally have about half of those people as professional consultant type developers and about half of them being uh, what we refer to as in-house developers. These are typically subject matter experts uh, in one field or another who've picked up FileMaker and become a developer and built solutions for their own use. And it's a really great opportunity to learn about FileMaker and um, interact with folks. So Bill, I'm going to take a couple of questions and maybe um, I'll field some, you'll field some, and, and, and we'll just go back and forth here. So um, first off, there were a fair number of questions regarding what I'll categorize as general serving uh, opportunities. So Bill was showing you FileMaker Pro hosting a database. I talked about server um, and so forth. So here's the nuts and bolts of that. FileMaker Pro will enable you to host through its FileMaker network sharing, as Bill was doing, uh, a FileMaker profile to up to nine clients. Those nine clients can be a mixture of Pro for Windows, Pro for Mac, or FileMaker Go on, um, on any of the devices that we support there. So um, the first thing to know is that there are clearly some best practices for doing that. You should really dedicate a machine uh, to be on all the time and be your quote unquote server, even if it's running Pro. Pay attention to backing up your files, these sorts of things. Um, you know, don't just throw a FileMaker profile up on a shared drive and open it. You will inadvertently host it to people. And so we just, we, and by the way, please call. We're happy to talk to you about that, but it's all outlined pretty well in the documentation. That leads me into talking just briefly again about FileMaker server. If you're using this uh, FileMaker either with or without iOS for your business, you have important data in there, we really encourage you to use FileMaker server. In addition to it being able to scale to hundreds of of simultaneous users and host uh, over 100 databases and that kind of thing. It also um, enables you great opportunities in terms of scheduling automatic backups at any time you want, not just when, but where you want to back up to so that your data is always safe. Having sort of 24-7 up uh, reliability, enhanced performance, messaging, and all kinds of other things, we'd be happy to talk to you about that if you want to call that insight sales number. Um, but again, I would say use server. And just to, to make a point, the questions came in uh, in a few places in context to uh, how their people are currently sharing data now. So this typically looks like you know spreadsheets uh, shared through, say, Google Docs, or maybe just on a shared drive or through SharePoint or something like that. And you know this is what FileMaker is all about: is really solving those problems and limitations that you're encountering if that's what you're doing, because. As Bill was working on that, that, that file, anybody that had access to that IP address and credentials to get into the file could be working on it as well. FileMaker handles record locking so that if I have a record for a given contact and I'm typing in a field, no one else can have access to that record until I tab out of that field or, or as we say, commit the record, um, <clears throat> in which case the next person can. So you have this persistent way of allowing hundreds of people to simultaneously access the information and always have the most up-to-date information and never have more than one copy of the information to make people confused. That's really what it's all about. So, uh, and again, if you'd like to carry on that conversation, please let me know. Bill, do you have anything to add there? Yeah, no, I think those are great points, Phil. You know, my, my only add-on there was, you know, in 20 minutes you saw me click and drag and kind of simplify what you can do and, and to take it out to iOS. I did not get into our scripting engine. Uh, you know the the ways you can actually you know really take this to the next level, um, but it is a you know it's a platform. And I said it earlier, it's a platform to create custom solutions. It's not a spreadsheet. Uh, it's not if you're trying to share information with a couple people that doesn't change. You know it uh, it's not one of those. It's it's a platform to create custom custom solutions. And uh, Phil, I think you you summarized it very well. Excellent. So, and Bill also touched about it, but again, if you want to take files on your device, there's really three ways to get them there. You can load them through iTunes. 
you can email them. So if I just email the file to Bill, he could click on it and it would automatically open it on his iPad and FileMaker Go, or I can download them from the web. So there are great third-party resources out there where you can download FileMaker uh, files and templates and things like that for free, and uh, they will just work. So that leads me on to the next major theme here, which is syncing. We always, we always seem to get this question, and um, there were a lot of questions about it. So if I'm in an offline scenario, i.e. I'm not connected to server, which by the way, if I can be connected to server, I probably want that, right? If I'm in the field and I want to connect to my sales database to find all your information out there, uh, I want to connect to the persistent, most up-to-date version um, of that file and just use it via FileMaker server. But if I anticipate being, you know, in the desert or on an airplane or somewhere where I don't have connection, maybe, you know, one of my customers um, has fishing, they're out on fishing boats in, in the Bering Sea um, doing, you know, biological inventory of various fish species and these kinds of things. And those folks clearly don't have a network, right? So there are various techniques that you can use to manage this offline situation from writing scripts within FileMaker to handle it to some some sort of plug and play tools that are available to you out there. Um, and I encourage you to, to drop us a line um, and ask about that, but I'll just give you three resources um, right out of the gate. Uh, we have a, a great third party developer community that have done a wonderful job of tackling this issue. 360 Works, www.360works.com in Atlanta has a great tool called Mirror Sync. And this is probably the easiest tool to implement to just replicate your your table structure and all this stuff um, across devices, and so you could you could go check that out. There's also uh, a product called GoZinc from Seed Code up in the Northwest. That's s e e d c o d e dot com. And then finally, there's a local company here in the Bay Area um, called WorldSync that has a great tool called SyncDeck that that goes at the problem yet another way. And so what I would encourage you to do is talk to us or talk to a developer. Um, and just you know, tell us a little bit more about what you're trying to accomplish exactly because there's different ways to do the most appropriate thing. Do you have anything to add there? Yeah, no, a lot of it goes back to the business rules. You know, it's not as much of a technology thing as you know, what information do you want to keep as the most accurate? Is the most recent data that's been updated the most accurate? Or you know, if three people change the same field, uh, how, you know, what are your processes to determine the, the validity of the data? Um, but I think these are you know, three great examples of uh, tools that are out there, or again, like Phil mentioned earlier, uh, the ability to script it, script it yourself. Excellent. Um, so the next general theme that came up in a number of questions was training resources. This is really cool. How do I take the next step? And so the, the first thing I would say about that is if you own FileMaker Pro or if you've downloaded a trial, the tutorials that come with the product are available directly from the help menu there. And they're a really great hands-on way with exercises where you can go through and learn the basics of FileMaker all through simple scripts, simple calculations, and, and layouts and finding and so forth, and really uh, get a good grip on how to use FileMaker in a, in a sort of an intermediate way, I'd say, wouldn't you, Bill? Yeah, absolutely. Um, then from there, there's a number of great resources. Um, this is, becomes more about time than availability, I think, than anything. So. We have something called the FileMaker Training Series that's available on our website at support slash training. Uh, the training series is a 13 module over 800 page curriculum built by our system engineering team and one of our top consultancies in the country, which really can be the pathway to becoming a certified developer. Um, which for those of you who are thinking about developing FileMaker, that can be a great opportunity both in terms of, of the kind of work you can get and the, and the um, economic opportunity. And we'd be happy to talk to you about that. That training series is offered not just as a self-paced curriculum, but through leader-led courses. So if you um, want to find the training companies that offer that curriculum in your area, please visit our website or, again, give us a call. We can help you find that. And then on top of that, there's some really great web-based resources. Um, two of my favorites are VTC, Video Training Company, available at VTC.com. Uh, one of our local consultants here in the Bay Area, Richard Carlton Consulting, uh, helped develop the curriculum for them in their self-paced training. And then finally, you guys may be familiar with lynda.com, which we have a membership to here. I think lynda is a really great online resource for all kinds of computer training. So you, know, you can sign up, pay per month, and you get access to everything from Photoshop to FileMaker. Uh, and the FileMaker training up there is fantastic. 
there is a 10-hour course based on that certification training series done by one of the top uh, trainers slash developers in the country, and I, I think that's a great way to learn too. Anything else there, Bill? Yeah, no. We, you know, we've got customers that are, you know, deploying one iPad. We have customers that are deploying thousands of iPads uh, for what they're doing in FileMaker Go. And I think the other piece of training is, you know, for some of those uh, more mission critical or or you're maybe new to FileMaker, uh, some of our customers are working with our FileMaker Business Alliance. Um, uh, developers or consultants out there or third parties. We have 1,100 consultants around the world. And, um, you know, maybe they get you off the ground and then train you on the specifics around that solution as time goes on. But you have options, uh, everything from learning it yourself to working with a, a consultant to help you in the process. Um, I'm going to going to take a break from the uh, from the basic stuff here and answer what was a little bit of a technical question. So we had some questions come in about you know, how we show people the right view into their database. Bill showed you building a, a, a layout in FileMaker. And you can create as many of those layouts or views into your database as you want um, to accomplish different things or maybe for different devices. And all of our starter solutions actually have a couple of things about them that you'll be interested to go look at. One is layouts specifically made, as Bill showed you, for iPads, iPhones, or desktops at various resolutions, right? Um, they also all have a script in them that you can go look at. It's one of the first scripts under the script, uh, scripts menu. And it's a very simple way of testing. So what we do is we have a script step that goes out and gets the version of FileMaker Pro. And so if it sees Windows, then it, you can make it show a layout that you've designed for Windows. If it sees a Mac, you can do that. If it sees you know, uh, an iPhone, then you can serve it up the layout that's appropriate for the iPhone. It's super simple uh, and a great actual introduction to scripting. Anything is no, there? No, I think you're right on. Yeah. Um, so a number of questions came in about container field behavior as well. So FileMaker for a long time has had the ability to store various kinds of data in container fields, right? So you can stick anything in there. You saw some photos, but you can stick anything from PDFs to other FileMaker databases. Uh, Excel spreadsheets, any kind of binary data can be stored in those container fields. And we've done some really great work in FileMaker 12, in my opinion, to um, enhance the way that you can uh, use that data. So, um, you know, you can, so that you don't uh, bloat your database, right, store a bunch of high resolution images in your database. FileMaker and FileMaker server can store references to those images and they basically manage the storage on the back end of the high resolution files and just show you uh, a low resolution JPEG as your thumbnail so that you can manage all the documents and images that you want or need to without worrying about performance and even stream things like video and PDFs. So if I download a thousand, page, a thousand page PDF in a container field, I can start viewing the first few pages instantly. Um, so great tool for managing documents. Bill, anything there? Yeah, no, you're, you're absolutely right. I think, you know, you're working with a camera, um, you know, reading barcodes, you know, very common common use as well. Audio signatures, and that's, that's native container field behavior when you, when you use iPad. Yeah, and by the way, just uh, since he mentioned it, right, barcodes are a great example. You can use, of course, uh, external input devices with your iOS devices in order to uh, do things like barcodes and mag stripe readers and so forth out there. So, you know, one of my customers is a police agency. They track all their evidence using a FileMaker database, and they use a barcode scanner, a Bluetooth barcode scanner connected to an iPhone. And their evidence clerk just goes in and clicks on the barcodes, and they have it set up to, to go to the next field or the next record or whatever. And um, so if you're looking for field data collection, uh, things like that, really uh, a great way to do this. Um, there were a number of questions about sort of general price and availability and, and, and these sorts of things. Um, again, on that resources page, the FileMaker Insight sales number is a great place to go for those things. There are a couple of promos currently running. Um, I think we actually have a what, buy, buy, buy 10 pros and get a free server going this quarter. Um, so I'd encourage you to go check that out, please. And then a couple more things. One is someone asked if you could combine these starter solutions, right? So they saw Bill operating maybe with the contacts or the inventory solution. But what if you have contacts and inventory, right? So 
there you can actually integrate those things if you want to. You can build relationships between FileMaker files as well as FileMaker file uh, tables that are in one file. So um, I don't know if you want to hit on that yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, well, and again, without getting too technical, I mean, you, you should. I, I was. I showed you we had three tables, right? If you recall, we had employees, equipment, and photos, and we tied those three things together with the employee ID. Uh, those are FileMaker tables in my one solution. If you had access to those to tables and other FileMaker solutions, you, you could use those. If you had access to tables in SQL or MySQL or Oracle, FileMaker gives you the ability to um, to relate to that type of data as well. The data resides in Oracle and SQL and MySQL, um, but you can use it at business logic, at functionality, script uh, calculations, those types of things within FileMaker on more of that enterprise data. So again, a bunch of options there, but um, um, but whether it's FileMaker or external data sources, uh, FileMaker does a great job in, in working together with that. Excellent. So we have a few more minutes, and I'm not going to waste them because we have plenty of questions. So uh, someone asked, can, does all this work on the iPad Mini? We're talking about iPads. It turns out that uh, the iPad Mini and the iPad share resolution, and so the layouts that you're building for the iPad actually work the same uh, on the Mini. It, it sort of worked out great that way. So yes, uh, iPad, iPad Mini, iPhone, iPod Touch, any other devices? Yeah, any iOS, any yeah. iOS devices. Uh, it's a client. You bet. Um, uh, there were a few questions about web stuff. So, what if I have a database and I want to expose part of it to the web? Um, like, you know, for instance, um, I want to uh, publish a list of assets to the web where all of the employees could see it publicly. So that was actually the question. So there's a couple different ways to do web publishing. In that scenario, you know, I would recommend doing an e a simple PHP page, probably. Or you can use FileMaker's instant web publishing capabilities. But the point is, FileMaker Server Advanced gives you the ability to do both of these things. And it's just from, from FileMaker, from server's perspective, it's really just another FileMaker client in a sense. So server's the hub. It's where I've got my files hosted. And I've got FileMaker Pro clients connected to it in my office. And I might have FileMaker Go clients on iPads or iPhones in the field or in the office connected to it. And I might have web clients connected to it all at the same time. Um, and it all just works. I don't, I don't think there's anything really to add there, except you know there's some setup on the server side that you can look at. But you can definitely expose all of your data or parts of it to the web pretty easily. Yeah, yeah. We have a lot of customers that uh, you know they have third parties, they have consultants, they have contractors that that need access to the you know corporate data. And you know before they thought, well, how can I get this out to the web? Well, again, FileMaker Go is a free download from the App Store. Uh, it's possible to put a put a unique layout out with security credentials. That allow those third parties to use your your data, uh, but only in a very defined way. Uh, so it's it's worth you know kind of taking a fresh look at what the options are. Um, there was a question here about scalability. Someone asked if you could use FileMaker to track hundreds or thousands or hundreds of thousands of records. And I'll just say that you know I use a database every day that has 50 plus tables in it. Um, at least four or five of those tables have a million records in them. Um, I use it remotely, so it's quite scalable. I have one customer that's a little bit on the eccentric side that has uh, uh, 80 million records in one table. So while that's not necessarily normal, it's definitely doable. And, and FileMaker is quite um, scalable to fit you know, any work group need, I would say. Um, we had a bunch of questions about integration. So you know, obviously, once you start putting your data in a given place, uh, you start getting vision about how I can integrate it with other things because to Bill's point a minute ago, I might have SQL data sources like an Oracle uh, you know, ERP database that I want to get some information from and connect to that and, and you can do that. Or if I'm a small business, I might be using QuickBooks to manage my finances and then if I'm doing invoices and things out of FileMaker, hey, let's get those um, over to QuickBooks. There are some great plugins available to do that kind of stuff. In fact, you know, one company that does uh, uh, a, a lot of really great work is, is called Productive Computing. Uh, they're in Southern California. They're at ProductiveComputing.com. And they make a CRM tool that if you wanted to use FileMaker for that's a great pre-built solution to just download or even use online. But they also make a number of products, plugins, to integrate FileMaker with everything from Outlook to Addressbook to iCal to QuickBooks um, and on. So uh, again, have some vision here. Generally speaking with FileMaker, the answer to whether you can do something um, 
it, it's not a matter of whether you can or not, it's just how. So um, let's see, what else do we have here in the last couple minutes? I think um, we only have two minutes left, and so what I'd like to do now is, is um, I'm going to ask Bill to do one more thing. Do you still have FileMaker Pro open? Um, sure. There was one person that just wanted us to reiterate how we